So today we're going to be talking about building the first part of a robot, which is the base. So here we have um, a small thing that we did, we put together real quick for you guys to see. So first let's just do a quick parts review. So these are the parts that you'll mainly be using to build the base. And uh, I just want to make sure you guys knew uh, what is what there before we start. So obviously first we have the Omni wheels, which are the front wheels on these. They're good for churning. You have traction wheels on the back, keep them from sliding around and being pushed away with other robots. Axles, put them on the wheels so they rotate. Bearings, this is a bearing. Do any of you guys remember what this is for? No, it's good for places. And it prevents things from rubbing against each other, like yeah. scraping. So you That's use it. this whenever you use an axle so it doesn't rub against the metal, okay? So this holds it in place so it's not grinding against the metal. And then we have screws. You guys know what screws are for. You guys know the difference between the catch nut and the nylon nut? No? Yeah. Well, there's like the upper one should go on, and one of them is like around or something. I don't know. So the catch nut, um, it's a lot, it's, it has a little crown on the top, and it's a lot looser uh, and easier to use, so mainly use that at the beginning for your build. And you put them around the nylons. They're a lot um, harder to deal with, and you need to use a wrench to put them in, but they hold things together a lot tighter, and they don't come loose. So you usually use that for uh, moving parts in your robot, like if you're using a lift or some kind of other design like that. Because since it's moving around a lot, it can come loose really easily, and that's why I use a nylock to keep it together. And then we have um, C channels. So just these pieces of metal that make a C. It's called a C channel. And then we have uh, standoffs. So standoffs, we really haven't talked about that much yet. But this is what a standoff is, basically. You can screw it in from both sides. It's good for making space. We have it right here. I'll explain why we're using it later. And then we have motors. These are the VEX version 4 motors, is what we have. VEX V5 is the newest ones, but these ones can still get the job done. And then we have um, sprockets. So for this one is a sprocket. It's, it's got more pointy edges and much more than, like you see this is a gear. It's smaller. These are pointy edges. These are used um, for tracks like these. So you put the tracks around them and you make them rotate. And then we have our gears, which are these ones. And chain or tank treads, which are both names we call them by. They're right here on the robot, as you can see. And then um, encoders are the sensors that you'll be using that we don't have it on this robot. So I want to make sure you guys understand what all those parts are, right? You guys have any questions on those? No? Okay. All right, so now we have a couple different types of bases. Uh, these are very basic ones. So a square base, it's pretty much like what it's called. It's very square. Um, you can use each of these bases in different situations. A U base is shaped like a U, as you can tell. Um, this base would be very useful if you have if you have like a ball intake and you need to pick up balls, bring them into the middle of the robot to shoot them, to launch them, whatever you need. And then what we built is an H base or a square base. And it usually, they look like that, and they have the wheels on each of the sides, and they're covered with the two C shells. So, this is a quick base that we made in the space of about two days, maybe it took one, one and a half hours of work. It doesn't look like a lot, but when you start working on these kind of things, it actually takes a lot of time to make. So, you have to make sure you account for that. So, basically, what we have here on the side, um, hey, everyone come closer. So, basically, what we did is we made this the front of the robot, okay? So the front of the robot has the omni wheels, and what we've done here is we put space here, we put space in here so you can climb on top of things. Because if you don't have it here, right? Think of the back wheel. Um, let's say, say we wanted to climb this, right? If you if you don't have space in front of the wheel, the metal's gonna hit it. It's not gonna climb. So you leave space in front of the front wheels so you can climb over like this. And that's why we have we have it done like this here. And we have it closer off in the back for protection. C channels on the side. It gives the wheels more stability, so the axles have two locations where it's centered on it, so it's not wobbling as much. Um, uh, we wanted to demonstrate the use of a sprocket chain. So what we have here is two motors that are being able to power all of these, because this motor is going to turn this sprocket, which is going to turn this chain, which turns the back wheel too. So that's kind of the use for a sprocket, though the main reason why we use it isn't quite demonstrating this robot, but I'll talk about it later. And this is the basic design. We have our cortex in the middle. You can connect it to the wires and everything around. So uh, what I want to do first is have you guys identify strengths and weaknesses of this base, all right? So take a good look at it and think of um, 
what reasons it's good for, what things it's bad for, and how you can improve it. Because this is a really mediocre base. It's really not very good. And there's a lot of different ways to improve it. And I want to see if you guys can figure that out. Well, one weakness is, is that if you have a lot of uh, machinery or parts on top of it, it might not be able to um, it might not be able to move as fast because it only has two motors. So if you have four motors, you're probably going to have be able to move faster and be able to carry more load. Yeah, a typical robotic shark will have four motors on it. Um, and this one, we just wanted to show off the way to use a sprocket so we only use two motors. But yeah, that's definitely yeah. a point too. You know what Alright, so one thing I wanted to highlight, right, is motor placement. As you can see, the motors are right here, right? Mm -hmm. If you wanted to put some kind of component on your robot, it's going to be on this side or this side, right? This is obviously in the way of that. So normally, what you would do with a sprocket, right, is you want, you're gonna, you want these wheels here, right, because you still want your front wheels. So what you do is you move your motor back under here into the middle of your robot, where it's not in the way of anything, and you put a sprocket here, and then you train the wheel like that. So this wheel will still be motorized, but from the back side. So that's the main use of a sprocket for our base designs. Anyone else have any other ideas? Well, it doesn't have any place to hold a battery. That's one thing. So you always have to plan different spots of how you want to do it. And there's also no space to build any other components off of. All you have is this channel here and these sides. Obviously, you want to add more, more spots around that you can build off of, right? Any ways to improve it to make it better? Uh, the motors are on the inside, so if you drive over something, you could possibly scratch them. So that's just um, So wh where would you place the motors then? Uh, probably on the inside. It's on the inside. <laughs> it's extended further in. Yeah, so you that's what I was... Underneath the... Like, so yeah. underneath, that's what you said. Yeah, so I'm saying you want to place them here, right? No, uh... So inside, you, underneath the thing? We want to put the motors inside of the seat channel. Yeah, yeah. Wanna, okay. So the problem with that is then you won't have anywhere to screw the motor on. Because if it's if it's in here, you need a metal plate in front of it okay. for the motor itself to screw on, and then you need a bearing to keep the axle straight. So you can't really bring it in here, and that would also make this too wide, and be really hard to build anything else off of it on inside of the robot. And it, they are out here and exposed. And that's why it said we should bring them in here. And um, I guess if you're saying that it might drive over stuff, uh, typically there's nothing that big to where it should be a problem, especially if you put it in the middle side. If you put it in the front, sure, if you're riding close to here, it's gonna hit this. But by the time it's in the middle, it should be high enough to the point where it's not touching anything. Yeah, okay, this is our uh, basic base design, right? And uh, Today we were thinking um, we'll let you guys get into groups uh, for maps, and you guys can try making your own base design. So like pull out a piece of paper and a pencil, and try to make your own. Okay, okay. 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 we made a square with wheels. It, you see the little box represents a motor? It's a wires wheel. We're running out of power to the motors, and this is the battery. So, oh, is it the battery or the cortex? This is the cortex, right? Because sure. the, the wires have to be connected to the cortex, and the battery is then connected to the cortex. Sure. Yeah. Sure? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's I don't know what I'm talking about. So I'm just gonna go with what you're saying here. We're using different angles. So are you guys doing two all the Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. So have you planned out where your metal sheets are gonna be? Because it can just be floating in the air, right? Yeah. The first thing is gonna start on the bottom of the thing. Just cover it up. And they're gonna be over the motors on the sides here. This is gonna be exposed because we're gonna put in the battery. And we're gonna have a hole here because it looks cool. Okay. That's about it. And of course on the sides. Keep working on it. Nice <laughs> job, you guys. Hey guys, show us what you got so far. Alright, so it's going to be a square, right? right? So we're going to take two C channel, um, the ones that are uh, 1 by 5 by 1 by 5 inches. Oh, it's like it's long on both sides. Um, yeah, 25 inches. Yeah, 25 inches. So usually for X, we're going to 16 by 16. Right? So try to keep it to that. 25 inches is really, really, really large for me. Uh, you won't be able to support that properly. Oh, okay. So just make sure you keep it at 16 by 16. But yeah, 16 are downsizing. Like, I, you know, I did 
really understand the size. That's fine, that's fine. Um, so then we're going to take those flat plate plates that can, you know, bend. We're not going to bend, but just use a plate. Um, we're going to get it over the C channel, have the C channel for the, the flat side, for the outside, for the real key. Um, and then the flat plate will go on top, screw it down, and we'll put the vortex, zip tie, um, we're going to zip tie the, uh, the battery down. Um, Zip it in. Uh, then we're going to have the uh, motors stick the cortex. They're going to be outside. I mean, you know, realistically speaking, it's not going to be by 25, I guess, but by 16. And have the wires going to the cortex from the outside instead of the inside. We might move it to the inside and then make the wires go through the holes. But, you know, I guess we'll see. That's fine for beginning design. Um, the one thing I wanted to do is, like, you thought mine was neat? Yeah, but look, bigger. So, so, what I'm understanding is, you got your wheels here, your C channel here, right? And you want to put flat metal to cut the entire yeah. thing? So, is the flat metal going to go on the wheels? or just No, not on the wheels. Here, I'm just here. So, you want to flat metal this entire thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you want to build those up? Mm -hmm. So, you're flat metaling it so you can build things on top of that, right? Yeah, on top of it. So, like so, a claw or something. Um, like the only problem with that is, right, flat metal isn't very strong. Yeah. So, you can put a lot of weight on it, it's going to bend in. So, I think that's a good idea, but you should do it with C channels like this. Yeah, okay, see, here's the thing though. I didn't know, like, how span, like, how. Okay, so they can go up to five wides. Five wides? Um, All right. So, so that's, how, how many of these would I do? You can use as many as you want. Uh, right. Just keep it up, okay? Right, thank you. Wonderful. Uh, okay, so we decided that if it's gonna be a lift, we need an area to lift stuff up, and. But there's not gonna be enough space for the components. So. What we did was we kind of opened it up in the front, kind of like an H, but kind of like a C with larger space in the back. So technically it is a C, but yeah. Um, you, 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 Carter. What? You, you. You. Er, I, you. Yeah, yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a thick with a thick little inside. Yeah. yeah, so you have uh, traction wheels in the back and then uh, omni wheels in the front. You have the sprockets. Uh, we have both the motors in the back and then the cortex and the battery. Yeah, that's like the inside view of like, we have like a thick inside to fit all of our components. Yeah. So you're gonna sprocket the motors then? Yeah. So are you putting two motors on one section and then it's gonna go all the way out? Mm -hmm. So how are you thinking of combining the power of these two motors? <laughs> I have no idea. I'm not sure. Well, what happened was... Justin's gonna answer that question for you. So, there's the shoe on the back. This sprocket actually is an actual diagram. It's gonna be further forward so it's connected to this motor. So that way the sprocket and the chain connect to the spark wheel. So you're double sprocketing this, you're using two sprockets. Yeah, so that way this one goes here and then this one, same thing on this side. And then this motor goes back to this wheel, to the back wheel. That works, if you have no Yeah. The only um, problem I would see with putting the lamp on the back of the base, um, for one thing, your, um, your weight's gonna be really offset. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. you're, every, you're putting everything on the back and nothing on the front. So you can get some bleeding on your robot. Second thing is if you want to pick something up, you're gonna have to like surround it with yeah. your robot. <laughs> yeah. And then pick it up. So, so square might be better. No, I'm, I'm not saying anything better, but you guys have is fine. I'm just giving you things to think about, that's all. So you guys aren't doing anything wrong. You're doing really good. And it's actually a really nice drawing you guys have here, better than what I can draw. <laughs> no. So yeah, it's really good. Just keep it up. Make sure you figure out all the little parts. But yeah, it's going well. Thank you. No problem. Oh, would you like to explain? This image to me. Um, okay, so we have a video base design. The motor just been so we have yeah. Yeah, that's basic. <laughs> so you don't have to add spacers now. Just show me the basic design. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So we have, so we have the geese base design. We have the, the cortex in the back, so it doesn't interfere with anything. We have a battery on the outside that's protected by this C shape thingy. Yeah. We have two motors to drive these wheels. And then we have space in between them. And then we have these motors. With the sprockets. And these sprockets. And we have the chain on them. To drive these two wheels. These two wheels are omni wheels. And these are traction wheels. Yeah. So are you putting on the double switch on this one but not on this one? <laughs> yeah.
Why? Okay. Okay. Oh. Uh, I said we can put it on the outside, but you said we put it on the inside. No, so what we're gonna do, okay, so we have two um, C channels here and we have a wheel here. So we have a gear right here and a gear right here. So, um, and the motor's right here. So the, the motor will be connected to this wheel, which move. well, the gear here, which moves the chain that is, cre uh, that is connected to a gear here, which makes that move. What? Yeah, that happens because they're mixing each other. So, are you sprocketing the entire thing? Yeah. So, this, okay, so this, this one is sprocketed. Okay. This one is by itself. Yeah. Yeah. But then this one doesn't have a protection inside on it. So we need yeah. to buy like okay, so like, so like, each motor. That's what I said. Like, oh, they're both inside. Okay, each motor. Yeah, so I don't recall. So we have the only right here. Yeah, because you guys don't now listen to me. That's why. Okay, guys, calm down. You gotta work together as a team. No, no pointing blame, right? Yeah. Shaw. Shaw. Okay. So, so, so yeah, one thing I would definitely want to think about changing is putting this on the inside so it has both C channels protecting it. Because if you have one where there's only one side for the axle, it gets really wiggly because the axle doesn't support on both sides. So you really want this, it's almost a necessity, okay? okay. And then, what are you guys thinking of putting your lift? Because we were saying that we can add a lift on it. Okay. Uh, probably on the top. Right there. You're gonna put the left right on top of the cortex here? Yeah. See, uh, again, they, they do that as well. The only problem with that is that your weight is all the way in the back and there's no weight on the front. Oh, you put so it on you your own. Oh, oh, you put it on there. Like, right. Yeah. That you need to do, complete all the. Uh, so, yeah. Jobs, the only but you put that in the front. So, you're putting the lift in the front then? Yeah. Okay. But you're, there's an empty space here, so you're gonna add bars here. Yeah, we're well, gonna add bars here and put it. Okay, so you're gonna put bars here and build it up on there. Yeah. Alright, that's pretty good. Alright, so try, try to get more specific with now measurements, lengths, and designs, exactly how you wanna build each component, okay? So start, start now planning your spacers, everything you wanna do for that, okay? Okay. Um, make sure we keep it in a 16 by 16, okay? That's, that's the measure. 16 inches by 16 inches. 16. That, that's the, what Vex uses as their yeah. requirements. Yeah. Alright, good job guys, keep going. Alright, what's got going on? So, um, can you explain what you have so far to us? Do you recall them? Yeah. Um, it's not. There's only a rough draft. So this is the oh, vortex. Uh, this is the wheel. And I'm gonna eventually connect wires so I can put in what the motor right here. And then I'm gonna draw what is called the chain link so that I can go with both wheels. And I'm gonna. I don't know. I should like both wheels as far as I go. Okay, so you're gonna use two motors and power wheels. And you're gonna sprocket the motor. Alright, that's pretty good. Alright, that's good so far. Keep going. Right? Yeah. You're doing really good. You're doing the hardest groups in the world.